Hey folks, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwei. As a parent, I, uh, I give my kids the ability to choose what they will and will not do gradually. I don't give my two-year-old, I don't have a two-year-old anymore, but when my kids were two, I did not give them the opportunity to tell me what they would eat or the groceries we would buy when we went for food or when um, they should go to bed. I made those choices. My wife made those choices. As my kids grow up, I let them be involved more in those choices. Right, my my seven-year-old son still doesn't have the choice as to what time he goes to bed because he would never sleep. So we still dictate what time he goes to sleep. But we do not force him to to always eat everything on his plate. Right? We, we, we give a little bit more. We give a little bit more opportunity. We, we give them more opportunities to, to choose which way they will go, what they will and will not do. When we go for groceries, we allow them to choose certain things because it helps build up their, their wisdom. Now, I have also, as you know, I have two older children. Children, my son, graduating from university this year, like next month, this month, my Lord. He's graduating from university this month. Congratulations. Um, and and my, my eldest daughter is, is working in Shelburne and doing some really, really amazing things down there, and I'm proud of both of them. Now, they are at the stage where I don't make their choices at all. They make their choices. I don't have to be happy about it. And I am certainly willing to tell them what I think about their choices. But ultimately, their choices are their choices. And I have to allow them to do what they choose to do. Because I love them. Because if I don't, I will stifle them. I will keep them from growing beyond this particular stage. I need them as a father. I need them to continue to grow, to become more and more and more self-reliant. I need them through their experiences and through their education and through their knowledge, the knowledge that they gain through their experiences, I need them to be able to continue to grow through all of that, to, to, to be the people that they're supposed to be because someday I'm not going to be here. I have to trust them when they make their choices. Now in our world today, choice is a, a big word that's being thrown around. Choice is a big word that is being thrown around. That people are saying, women are recognizing that their ability to choose is being hampered. It's, it's being taken away. That their ability to choose is, is, is their, their, their choice is being violated. That they're being told, you will not choose this. You will not choose that. This is your direction. This is what you will do. Now, in a society, we often, we often regulate people's choices. We don't get to choose to do whatever we want to do. Society, as a whole, decides that this is or is not healthy. And every now and then we come back around and we say, oh, we're going to reevaluate this because we've changed our minds. And so we regulate or we deregulate a person's ability to choose. But society does that. 
as a whole, together, and often in ways that is not formal legislation. It's just a community standard. And we hold people to those community standards. But here's the thing. When it comes to choice, our ability to choose is an essential component of our humanity. And it's something that God recognizes as well. If God is all-powerful and omnipotent and omnipresent and, and the biggest, baddest, strongest guy on the block and all the things that we, we imagine God to be, this, this huge, great, big, universal power, can do anything, can see anything, knows everything, then it would have been very simple for God to simply take away our our. Ch- our, 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 take away our ability to choose. Take away the opportunity for us to choose. God easily could have just forced God's self onto us. You will worship me. You will obey me. You will love me. We will be together no matter what you want. But God doesn't do that. Right? God says, I want to be in relationship with you. You should be in relationship with me. God even makes a commandment. But yet, we're not hardwired to obey that commandment. And that's what I'm saying. God could have hardwired us to to be in relationship with God. But God didn't. We're given the opportunity to choose. Because it's in that opportunity to choose that real relationship can be had, that real love can be felt, that experiences and growth are achieved. Again, as a society, we, we regulate and deregulate choices all the time. But every time we do it, we take away the freedom of people. Every time we do it, we take away the opportunity for people to make an authentic decision. We remove an opportunity for people to succeed on their own or fail. We remove an opportunity for people to make a mistake or achieve huge success, we remove the opportunity for people to gain wisdom and insight and knowledge. We remove an opportunity for them to grow in a direction that we can't possibly imagine anybody would grow. We're supposed to be like God. We're supposed to be like God. And this, please understand, is a reflection. This is not the be-all and end-all. This is an opportunity for conversation. But if we are supposed to be like God, and God gives creation the choice as to whether or not they will be in relationship with God, or in what type of relationship they will be with God, Should we not be willing to do the same for our brothers and sisters? Should we not be able, should we not be willing and able to do the same for for people to make a decision that we may not agree with? Should we not be willing to trust them that what they are doing is is what they truly believe is best for themselves. Even when we wouldn't do it for ourselves. I know what I'm saying is is filled with nuance. I know that there are extreme cases in all kinds of directions. But I genuinely believe that 
as a Christian, a follower of Christ, a, a person who is desperate to be in relationship with God, who, who desires to grow, to become more and more and more like Christ every day, I truly believe one of the things that, that I need to be able to do is to let go of what other people choose to do. I need to be willing to trust them. Because letting people choose is a very authentic way of showing our love for them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. I pray we'll all grow in this way that we can we can take our hands off of the lives of others. We can let them experience the fullness of their humanity. Even when they're making choices that we might not like. Amen. Numultus.